one of the first ones was chemtrails because you cannot debunk it. It's real. Groovy. Easy, Rick. That, that, that's dark. Oh, it gets darker, Morty. Welcome to the darkest year of our adventure. Yo, fuck nuts. It's probing time. But you must understand our interest in their world was purely for the betterment of mankind. Everything has clearly gotten out of hand. Greetings, strange humans, and welcome to another episode of CJH. And this is Conspiracy Hour. And here's my guest, if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, how are you today? My name's Eternal Slayer. I'm the guest on the show for today. CJ and I go way back, actually. We, uh, we live in the same general area, but we both have very different um, lines of work. For example, you're a very uh, well-known YouTuber, CJ. You've got a lot of subscribers. You're well-known in the community. You've really outsourced yourself really well. Me, I'm kind of just starting out. Like, I'm just starting out with this whole Twitch streaming stuff. So I don't have very many people on my, my channel just yet. But I do like to stream every now and again. And, you know, sometimes I say some controversial things while I'm streaming. So I guess me and you are a little bit similar in, in that respect that we kind of like to delve into the politics of not just games or shows but also like real world events too and that's what i really like about your podcast cj you, you talk about a combination of different things yes i i certainly try to keep it fresh and new um but uh today today we're going to talk aliens ufos that type of stuff stuff that goes bump in the night and uh, do you have any alien stories to tell us? I sure do. It's a very interesting topic. You know, I, I generally think that there's like a line that you draw between conspiracy theories that people read online and then things that happen in like the real world that we just simply can't explain. And I think that UFOs are the latter rather than the former. So, you know, the Pentagon came out recently saying that they need a c committee of people to look into the aerial phenomenon. They don't call them UFOs anymore because, you know, UFO generally makes people think of aliens and they want it to be as scientific and realistic as, as they can make it. So now they call the UFOs Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon or UAPs. I prefer to call them UFOs because personally, there's no technology on Earth like them. So for us to consider it to be anything except for alien, I, I just don't think that that's accurate because they, they've they already admitted that no country on this planet has the type of aircraft that's capable of moving the way that we've seen these UFOs moving. How about you, CJ? Do you think that there's intelligent life in the universe? Oh, for sure. Um, whether or not it's us in the future or whether or not it's us, I don't know at some point in the past is up for debate, I suppose. You don't think that it could be another form of life from a different galaxy? Well, I think with trillions of planets and stars, there's bound to be life out there. For certain. And, you know, the ingredients for life are probably out there, too, in the way that we look at the stars. I love space. I'm sure you love space as much as I do. But one of the things that we recently learned about our galaxy, the Milky Way, it's one of the oldest galaxies ever created. So during the Big Bang, there were a couple of galaxies that were created in the beginning, and the Milky Way was one of the galaxies that was created first. The Andromeda galaxy that's next door neighbors with us is actually a little bit older than us by a few million years. But scientists basically uh, were able to date the Milky Way goes back a lot further. And they've actually identified that it was one of the oldest galaxies. 
So I almost wonder if we were to look for alien life, we would probably want to look at the older galaxies first rather than the ones that are brand new. Because, you know, life takes a lot of time to evolve and develop. So I think if we're really serious about trying to find intelligent life in the universe, we should be looking at the older galaxies just like ours. Yes, because uh, life travels further and whether or not they would still be around, still be alive is a question we uh, ponder. Exactly. And if they did live near us, I mean, it wouldn't be hard to find Earth. Like, I personally believe that is that these beings that are visiting us are definitely from a different world. Like, I'm not sure if they actually are us from the future or not. That's that's another possibility that I also agree with you on. But if they are another form of life, it doesn't seem unreasonable to me that they would be able to find our world. Because when you think about it, Earth kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. We got all this space debris, you know, floating around us that's pretty easy to spot if you're flying through space you got like all these radio signals that we're literally broadcasting into space so if there was any intelligent life out there that was within close enough proximity they could easily pick up on earth signal it, it wouldn't really be that difficult to find and one thing in canada is that we've been noticing a big increase in the number of ufo sightings people would say that you'd see about one ufo per day now it's more like three ufos per day that's how many reports are coming in so since the pandemic the the amount of ufo sightings has gone up some people attribute it because we've had more time on our hands to look up at the sky since everybody's been stuck inside but another possibility is that there's more visitors that are coming to this planet from really far away it's so serious that the pentagon created like i said their own specific branch that deals very much in this topic they wouldn't take it seriously unless of course it was a real phenomenon and the reason they're concerned by the way cj is because they're concerned that aircraft might have a collision with these ufos at some point so they want to get to the bottom of where they're coming from or what type of technology is being used here because they're stumped they really don't know with 100 percent certainty what it is they just know that it's happening and it's being reported more and more often as as of oh sorry were you gonna say something go ahead yes um papa cotton is in the chat and he says uh bob lazar wasn't lying and dave ike is right about everything oh yeah dave Ick. I, i've heard a couple of things about him over the years and i've heard you know a lot of different names like the the guy that was doing the disclosure project and all those those big wig people like i agree with some of the things that they're talking about but there are some things out there that they they kind of lose me on. Like, you know, David Ick is one of those people who believes in the reptilian overlord type people that basically rule the world. I'm not saying that there wasn't perhaps at some point in our history a uh, different type of people that lived on the world. But I just don't know about those people still living here or shapeshifters or Queen yeah. Elizabeth being... Sure. You know, a, d a dinosaur. Yeah, <laughs> or whether or not they're actually reptiles or just, you know, terrible people. That's another way of looking at it, too. Yes, yeah, you know, apparently, like, the way that, some, that, like, we evolved, some people are just, due to the way that they evolved, they are just very self-serving. Uh, like, just that was their specific way that they evolved on their path. Um, but again, we're missing a lot of DNA links. So we, I can't even definitively say for sure, like what we descended from. We think that we descended from the Neanderthal, but there is definitely a missing piece of DNA that links human beings to, to the monkeys. And uh, they're not sure exactly what accelerated our evolution. But some people, like if you watch that ancient aliens TV show, <laughs> they think that it's that aliens actually... Uh, changed our DNA and like combined it with some of their DNA, which and, is and possible. Oh, no, it's mean... not impossible for for certain. Like it could be like, you know, the way that a baby's head forms when it's first born is disproportionately larger than its body because we were originally aquatic beings. Like we were originally supposed to give birth to to uh, children underwater because, like, if you think about it, childbirth is really painful because the child's head is so disproportionately large and that's due to gravity, but underwater gravity affects you differently. 
So it definitely proves that at some point human beings did originate from the water. Uh, there's other factors as well, like, you know, the way our, our skin is, the way that we, we've evolved. Uh, the hiccup. When people have a hiccup, that's because when the first creatures from the sea came out onto the land, they gasped for air. And it basically is like a hiccup because at one point we probably had gills. So eventually we evolved to be more like, you know, mammals and walk on the land. Yeah, especially considering ha almost half of the earth is covered in water. And our bodies, like 90% yes. of human beings are, are made out of water. So it's not really a stretch uh, to believe that. But what is the stretch is figuring out the missing links in our in our ancestry. That's something that science just hasn't quite figured it out yet. Same with the UFOs and the alien phenomenon. Yes. Now, I, oh, sorry, what was that? We as humans certainly like to experiment on uh, other humans, so it's quite possible, you know, another species would have did the same. Definitely. And uh, who knows, like, if there's other types of worlds out there that we don't know about where things are just an experiment that a, a very intelligent life form just puts life on a planet and sees how things work out, kind of like a chemistry lab. But um, no, with the UFOs, I was going to mention that uh, the technology that's used, they don't leave behind any type of residue whatsoever. Like, you know, with our airplanes, how we, we produce condensation and other uh, <laughs> emissions. We'll get they, to that topic on yes. another, in a, in another, another platform. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be an interesting discussion. But no, you know how most of the vehicles that humans use, they use combustion. That's, that means that it requires a push in order to force the energy into that certain, uh, to release the energy form. It needs a push. But these UFOs don't produce combustion. They have no radiation. They have no emissions. That probably means that they're pulling. They're using some other force in the universe to move their ships because they don't produce the type of emissions that a rocket would produce. It's almost like these, these craft that are built are perfect for... Uh, navigating space and they leave no residue and they're able to make angular turns in a way that our aircraft could never do well um humans recently discovered nuclear fusion i don't know if you read about that and that could lead to uh ufos and how they uh power right move. Well, I was reading a little bit of something along those lines as well, that scientists were trying to look at electromagnetism for their spaceships because some planets like our Earth produce an electromagnetic field. So if you put create a ship to be like a giant magnet, you could pull the ship through space by locking onto other planets. And that's probably what these UFOs do already to go through space. They probably lock onto planets and pull themselves toward it. Like, it, it wouldn't be difficult, because if a planet's exerting a magnetic force in space, uh, magnetic forces can travel as far as they want. That means that you could always lock onto another planet's uh, magnetic field, no matter the distance. Like, you, can, you will eventually move, if you move through space, you'll eventually end up near a planet that's exerting a geomagnetic force. So if you have a ship that's built like a magnet and can utilize those forces... You could pull yourself through space without using any type of combustion or wasting any type of energy. And then you'd be able to go really fast, too. So that's what they're working on in the next 15 years. Trying to, they're trying to get that done by 2035 is what, is what I read. Those types if, of spaceships. If we survive that long. <laughs> yeah, but that's an entirely... That's a whole different can of worms. I mean, I guess we, if Elon Musk is anything to indicate, we should all be feel reassured. If Elon Musk takes over Twitter, we'll we'll be we'll be saved. <laughs> but <laughs> if he finally makes up his mind, that is whether or not we're going to the Mars or yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen someone with so many scandals like. But I'm not a big fan of Bill Gates either. Like I say, like if I had to choose between Bill Gates or Elon Musk, I feel that Elon Musk is the lesser of the two evils. They're the lesser of the lizard people. <laughs> the lizard people, exactly. 
the, the people that rule the rest of the world. <laughs> and maybe that's why they're terraforming the planet to make it warmer so that they can actually cope. Cause you know, lizards love the hot temperature, right? Well, they just <laughs> introduced uh, oxygen into, uh, I, I read an article today um, with a, uh, a created oxygen on Mars. I don't know how wow. they did it, but yeah, it was breaking news, I guess. It's a pretty good sign. If they can get agriculture to work on Mars, they could eventually create an atmosphere. Because really, when you think about it, that, the atmosphere is just a trade-off. It's oxygen that's produced by the plants, which goes up into the into the air. And then, of course, the carbon dioxide that people breathe out gets absorbed by the plants and then turned into oxygen. So really, it makes a lot of sense. That's basically how you start terraforming. You plant a lot of trees, get the like vegetation to grow, and then uh, eventually an atmosphere would form. Or you'd hope that an atmosphere would form. That's what they're basically hoping for. Yeah. One of my concerns, kinda... though, with Mars, there's no magnetic field anymore. So I just don't know if they'd be able to provide safety from the sun's exposure like i don't know if you'd be able to live on mars without a space suit is basically what i'm saying it would be kind of funny if there's already a alien species up there and we're just interfering with their planet yeah <laughs> it doesn't look very lively though like you don't see any signs of civilization anywhere it's yeah, mostly unless it's underground well, that's true too they could be underground to you know hide away from the the external radiation That'd be pretty smart, actually. You know, given how many cycles of human uh, civilization collapsing and then rebuilding over and over again, who's to say that people didn't have sophisticated technology at one point, but then at one point we just kind of wiped ourselves away and yeah, then like forgot how to use do. it? Because if you have people that don't know how the technology works, like they don't know how to build it, they just know how to push a couple buttons, like... Do you think that people know how a phone works or how to build a cell phone? Like, we all use cell phones, but do any of us know how the cell phone really works? Like, I'm in IT, man. Like, I got my IT diploma, and I couldn't even tell you with 100%. I couldn't even break it down for you how a phone works. Like, basically, a crystal comes out of the ground. It gets chopped up into itty-bitty little pieces. And then the ones that have, like, a charge is a one. And ones that don't have a charge is a zero. And those ones and zeros talk to each other and give us information and data, which we use to talk to each other on the phone. Like, how do you explain <laughs> that's that? That's pretty trippy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really explain that at all. But yet, that's the technology that we use every day. And who's to say that, you know, what they had back in those times, it could have been very sophisticated. We just don't know what it is because we haven't seen it. Well, didn't they uh, find like a old computer in the ocean uh, oh yeah at, yeah among other things but, they but, had it, a, but uh, it's like a primitive computer right right and they almost had almost like a clock like, yeah that they had a lot of those back then clocks that measured like not just the earth's orbit but they had a clock that measured the orbits of mars venus and even earth's moon so it's pretty interesting Jeffrey Miller says, please don't tell me you believe this, <laughs> CJ. I, well, I read it as believe his, or what, was he saying believe this? No, I, well, we're just talking just about... Smell, spelling mistake. We're just he, talking about the planets, I mean, yeah. and technology that people probably had back in the day. Like, I know it seems hard to believe that we had technology like that, but... Yeah, I mean, you technically, know, when you think about it, a wheel is technology. And I mean, we had things that we, that don't explain, like science can't explain. They had steel back before steel was even invented. They found in one of the uh, old statues that they dug up, like, because the, there's these ancient artifacts that archaeologists dig up from random places when they're digging around under the earth. And they found something like a statue that had something inside of it. They took an x-ray and they seen that there was like a little ball inside of the statue. When they opened it up and took the ball out, it was a ball of steel. So the question that science, and it was in there for a couple million years, but steel wasn't invented until the Industrial Revolution. So the question that's stumping scientists and archaeologists is how did, how did steel 
end up in those time periods. So then people think time travel, then people think aliens, you know, there's all these, these outlandish theories. Yeah. The most simple theory is usually the one that's correct. Maybe we simply had access to technology that we didn't know about. Maybe we were just more sophisticated than people give us credit for. And that uh, civilization went through periods of falling asleep, waking up, falling asleep, and we lost our technology over the years, only to rediscover it again. Or there could have been like a opposition on some sort of like how uh, uh, they once believed flat earth and then scientists came out with the round earth theory and then people oppose that. Well, yeah, exactly. Like when a new idea is introduced that people aren't familiar with, it can cause a lot of discomfort. And that was especially true for people who were very religious minded at that time, because you had religious scripture that also accepted that the earth was flat and that, you know, the sun moved across the sky rather than, you know, the earth's rotation. Like they didn't, the ancient people, when they wrote those scriptures, they didn't have that, that down. They didn't understand the physics. And so they viewed everything as a flat dimensional plane because that was the best that they could understand. Like geometry was kind of new back then too. Like it was Aristotle that invented geometry, mathematics more or less. Like those were all new things to them. So explaining things like a million years, they didn't have a number for a million years. So they said that it was six days that God created, you know, the universe. But for all we know, it could have been a much longer period of time. They just don't know. They don't have the word for a million. There was no such a thing back then. You couldn't even count that high. And people living in those days, they couldn't conceptualize other like dimensions of geometry, like what we understand about the universe today, that it's not just a three-dimensional universe. There's other dimensions as well. And the well, more you mentioned, yeah. you mentioned time travel. And if w once time travel is introduced, then time would no longer be linear. It would be all pretty much all over the place. If you make a mistake, you go back. Well, that's just it, right? People think that time is like point A to point B, but that's only that's only if you're measuring relative time. And all time really is, you're just measuring the Earth's revolution around the sun. It's not really a real thing. Like time as we understand it versus time as it actually is. A lot of people don't actually really understand what time is. Space-time is a word that's put together because space and time occupy a certain region in outer space. So if you're up on a mountain, they've proven that time actually moves a little bit faster on the mountain than down on the surface of the Earth, which is bizarre, right? You'd think that time is a universal concept. It shouldn't matter the elevation or factors such as that. But there are factors that determine the way that time works. A clock in England might show a different time than a clock on an airplane because the clock on the airplane is moving through space time at an incredible speed. So the clock on the airplane is going to be a few minutes earlier than the clock that's standing still. Because when you're standing still in space time, time's moving slower. And then when you're moving, it's like uh, the difference between taking an airplane to get down the road to another part of, the of town and then just taking your bike. You're going to arrive faster on the airplane because you're moving through more space time. Bailey, so time uh, and space are kind of interconnected in that respect. Bailey Nixon in the comments mentions butterfly effect. And that's a thing as well. You step on a, a, a bug in the past and, you know, it changed history. It's a great movie. It's an interesting concept, but I don't know. It's it's a bit of a stretch to believe. It's like people who believe that if you step on a spider, it's uh, it's going to rain tomorrow or something. You know, it's kind of a superstitious thing. But um, there's people who think that if you go back in time, right, and you change one little detail, like if you uh, took a pencil out of a drawer or you wrote a letter and put it in somebody's mailbox, that it's going to drastically affect history. But if quantum physics is any indication, the multiverse is already a reality anyway. So every little thing that you change 
is just going to adapt. Like the universe is just going to adapt. It's not going to cause the space time continuum to collapse. It'll just create a new reality as it goes along because we exist in, you know, for lack of a better term, a multiverse of madness. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> um, Papa Khan in the comments mentions the window of human perception is so small that the idea that there are things in this world we can't see is absolutely certain. I like that. I like that very much. It's a very stoic thing that Papa Cotton is saying there. He's basically for he's quoting Socrates in a way. He's basically saying, I know nothing. And you know it's it's a very humbling thing because for everything that we think that we know there's so much more that we don't know. Like, first of all, there's the things that we think that we know. There's the things that we think we don't know. And then there's the things that we don't think that we don't even know because we don't even think that we don't even know because we're not even <laughs> thinking about that. Like, like people are um, <laughs> debating right now whether or not the Big Bang Theory is actually a real thing or whether or not the universe has always been and always oh, has, yeah. will be. I read that too. Apparently they're shifting their viewpoints on that a bit. Like it used to be a very static event that the Big Bang it takes place right there. That right right there at that time. At that to be time. fair, that was always a <laughs> but, theory as well, right? We well had Carl no... Sagan actually did an episode in Cosmos back in the seventies where he even asked the same question that the Hindus were asking, you know, in over in India that in their mythology the universe recreates itself over and over and over again like basically everything exists in a grand cycle and that the big bang is just one of millions of big bangs that have already occurred in the past and that this is just another cycle of a, of the same universe just repeating itself but well, a little bit different than the last time like like mandela effect yeah well it's the only constant in the universe is change it's the only thing that that we know for certain the only thing we know for certain is that nothing really stays the same the only thing we know for certain is that like we don't know everything and things are subject to change including our understanding of things so the theory that the universe doesn't have a finite beginning makes a lot of sense to me i think that people just try really hard to create dates and times for things that likely don't exist so the universe probably is like a timeless entity for lack of a better word it just keeps on rebirthing itself over and over again whenever it reaches the end of its cycle and who's to say it is an assimilation as well like it could yeah, be like a higher power of alien species that is simulating a universe within a universe yeah some people have said that's about 50 50 like you can flip a coin if it's heads then we live in a simulated universe and if it's tails we don't one thing that i would be looking out for if this was a simulated universe i'd be looking for glitches or inconsistencies like if you watch the movie the matrix there's glitches there's anomalies that don't quite make sense that's because the matrix is a simulated reality which means that it's it's going to be full of imperfections. If it's created to simulate the human experience, then it needs to cater to human flaws and, and like the human condition of suffering. So well, that could tie into the whole Mandela effect and how we remember things as well, right? Some people have said that, that the way that they recall their memory is different than the reality. I don't, I kind of take the Mandela effect with a grain of salt to this day. Like, even when I first heard about it, when they first talked about it as early as got up, like 2012 is how early they were talking about the Mandela effect. But, uh, like, saying things like, you know, Darth Vader, the way I remember in that cutscene, he says, Luke, I am your father. But that might just be word of mouth, the way people misquote movies or misquote TV shows. Because when you watch the actual clip, he just says, I am. He says, no, I am your father. He doesn't actually say, Luke, I am yeah. your father. And people but just pass that people, down. Yeah. Or they even go a step further and say that Bible quotes changed. But I got a news flash for you. Bible quotes have been changing for thousands of years. <laughs> like, I, if you're if you're alarmed right now that the Bible has changed, oh boy, wait till you find out how many times it's been rewritten. 
like or the Berenstein Bears could have just been a misprint. Uh, could have been a misprint, and I've heard people pronounce it both ways. But if you watch the actual cartoon, like they have the intro song, and the way they say it in the song is the way that I've always pronounced it myself. It was never supposed to be Berenstein. It's Berenstein. I've always heard it that way. I don't know where they got the Stein from. Frankenstein. That's a completely different show. <laughs> but um, was, to move on, uh, we'll kind of go back in the. You're way. right. We did get a Atlant- little off topic. Yes, Atlantis. What What do you think of that? Like, do you think that once existed? Was that an alien race living on Earth? More than likely, it was a mixture of that, like, because Atlantis had their own society, and they, the people who wrote about Atlantis said that it was a highly advanced society. It was written about during the times of Aristotle, so, like, it was, like, a myth. But a lot of these cities that were myths or biblical, like, cities, they end up getting discovered. It's just the ocean currents change. A lot of these cities end up underwater. Or, with Atlantis, here's something that you might not have considered what if it's a desert what if instead of atlantis being a city that's underwater what if instead it's actually a desert for example i i saw oh sorry go ahead oh i saw an image of that uh a while ago was it uh, a salt uh, desert like a it was a pit and it was like it would have like the geometry of Atlantis where, you know, they say that there's an inner city, then there's the outer circle, and then there's another circle on the outside. Well, if you look at the eye of Africa on Google maps, you can go on Google earth, just type in the eye of Africa. It's like a desert place on the earth. But if you look at the satellite imagery, if you look at it from space, it looks like a city. It looks like a civilization could have lived there. And if, what they describe about Atlantis is true, where they had, you know, three types of people living in Atlantis. They had the spiritual elder people who lived in the inner circle. They had like the people who lived outside of the circle who were basically the middle people between the spiritual leaders and the political people that ruled the Atlantis at the time. So the middle people would go to the spiritual people, the spiritual people would give them advice and then they would pass that advice to the rest of the community and to the political people who were concerned about Atlantis's uh, political interests. But there was a theory that there was an asteroid that was coming to the earth and apparently there were Martians involved and oh look, there it is. That is, that's it. The eye of Africa, you're looking at it. So yeah, you can see what I mentioned though. Like that's basically what Atlantis would have looked like back when it was above water, but apparently it, it suffered from floods and then it became a desert. But uh, yeah, the asteroids. So they basically, the theory is that Mar- Martians from Mars actually came to Atlantis. And uh, that was what caused civilization in Atlantis to collapse because uh, there were different alien species living there. And there's a lot of wars and infighting. But that's all like theoretical stuff. You can't actually yeah. prove any of that really happened. Well, I mean, it could have been like Greeks or the Romans you oh, know, exactly, invading. Right. One thing's for certain, though, um, Atlantis was talked about quite a lot back in those times. And even though there were a lot of metaphors and symbolism back in those days, there was was also a lot of literal places, too. Like um, Babylon. Babylon was a place that, you know, was supposed to be biblical scripture. But there was a place that they dug up, you know, the ruins of, of Babylon. There's like all these cities that actually exist out in the real world you know just because you read it in the myth doesn't mean that it was uh it wasn't a real place i'm sure the garden of eden might be a real place on earth too yeah or maybe even it could be from mars <laughs> imagine as well it's an interesting theory but yeah no atlantis i definitely think that it was real um and just like with how we lost our technology it was because there was like a lack of communication between the spiritual leaders of that time and the rest of the community. And that, you know, the indigenous people who live here say something similar. They say that people don't live in touch with the spirit of, of mother nature. And, and because people don't live in, live in that type of mindset, 
that's why we're seeing all the disasters that we see because people need to be like looking at things in a more holistic perspective. Like they need to think of things in terms of community rather than uh, me first, this whole me first attitude, this very self-serving attitude. I mean, capitalism in moderation is good, but what we see is not really capitalism. It's a very, uh, very aggressive form of, of um, oligarchy. It's an oligarchyism. <laughs> it's like, I wouldn't even call it uh, like, because capitalism, you'd have three classes, the rich, the middle, and the poor. But we don't really see that. We see people who are extremely poor and extremely wealthy. And then people who are in the middle tend to fall through the cracks. Like there isn't really anything in between. It's really, really disproportionate. Like owning a house back in the 70s and 80s, you could probably do that. But now, good luck. I mean, they found in Canada, you have to make like $100,000 a year if you want to like buy a house and live comfortably. You have to be making an income of at least $100,000 <laughs> Canadian every year. Yeah. So tell me that there isn't a problem with like greed and money. Like there, there definitely is. There's a huge disconnect. Like how do we value things over the ground beneath our feet kind of thing? Like how did we ever think that, that, you know, taking control of nature like this would not have negative consequences. Like every little thing that we do affects things on a grand scale. So unless we want to suffer the same fate as civilizations like Atlantis or other civilizations where we probably lost our technology, like ancient Egypt, you can't tell me that they didn't have that with some kind of technology. They were looking at space. They, they could see space using the, the bouncing lights and the sandstone that they had in the pyramids. The sandstone had quartz and quartz of course was a crystal semiconductor. So you could generate electricity they had all kinds of crazy technology back then, but we lost that over the years. And now the technology we use today is very destructive, very harmful toward the environment. But yet we have these UFOs that don't leave any residue. They don't leave any contamination. And I've done research. I haven't seen a single collision. Like there's not been an airplane and a UFO that ever collided. So the UFOs, if they're out there, they're certainly not threatening us. They're not attacking us. Perhaps they're just spectating to see what we do with our energy and our technology and see whether we use it to make the world a better place or, you know, destroy ourselves in the process. I think maybe that's they're just learning so they can learn their past or even their future, like learn from our mistakes. Absolutely. I think that that's a large part of it too. Maybe they feel that they can't interfere because uh, they'll either get sucked into our, our drama and then we'll pull them down with us or they're concerned that if they help us, we won't learn from our mistakes and then we'll just, uh, we'll do the same thing to another planet. We, we won't actually learn. We'll just keep abusing nature and abusing each other. Like, it doesn't surprise me why aliens don't actually want to like, talk to us or maybe they have tried and we just haven't given them the right answer maybe the only people that will talk to them are insane possibly and you know it's probably an issue of trust too like how can you trust a species that has done all these things to itself like you would think well if they do this to themselves how do you think they're going to treat us if we try to negotiate or make a deal or like coexist but yeah that's basically how i feel about aliens and technology like we were we had sophisticated technology and at one point we uh we had a perfect balance where we were living with our technology but we were also coexisting with nature so the technology we had wasn't too harmful to nature but nowadays, the technology that we have is very harmful to nature, and we can't really have it both ways. They talk about, oh, get an electric car, watch your carbon footprint. It's like, do they not realize how many batteries it takes to power an electric car? Where are you going to get those batteries? The ground? Oh, you mean the earth that you're trying to save? Oh, that? you mean that thing? Oh, yeah, that. Whoops. So much for the, you know, save the, the world by destroying the world. 
by digging up more batteries. <laughs> it's so hypocritical. And then they get on their private jet and they fly from one end of the earth to the other while they are saying, you better watch those emissions, guys. You guys are making a really big mess every time you open your mouths. Every time you turn on your car, you should really you, sh you shouldn't idle at a drive through. If you're idling for longer than 30 seconds at the drive through, you should just turn your engine off. Meanwhile, they're getting on their private jet from one side of the earth to the other, zigzagging all across province to province, state to state. <laughs> we really gotta <laughs> we really gotta cut down those emissions, guys. We really gotta think about our carbon footprint. What hypocrisy. It's insane. What uh what do you think of the Sasquatch? Do you think um that could possibly be the missing link of the alien? Or or it could be Chewbacca. <laughs> no, um <laughs> honestly there's some weird creatures that live on this island. I could lend you a book sometime, Weird Creatures in Cape Breton. There's a lot of um what you would call monsters for lack of a better term. Just these bizarre animals that you wouldn't think exists because uh, they're not in like a school book and nobody like sees them in nature, but that doesn't mean that they're not out there. Same with the ocean. Like we haven't mapped out all of the ocean either. There's a lot of weird creatures under there. There could be things like the Megalodon, for example, but things like the Loch Ness monster or Sasquatch, I'm not 100% sure. I think that there are definitely monsters though. Like, I don't know if you ever heard about the, um, uh, what was it? The devil. It was an animal that they called the, was it the Texas devil? It wasn't the Tasmanian devil, but it was a devil. It was like a giant bat creature that would like attack people in the fucking highway. Like they're driving on the car and they'd see a giant bat like fly directly toward them. And it's, oh, the Jersey devil. It's called the, Jer the Jersey devil. Just like creepy story that people talked about where they were, like, attacked by a monster on the highway kind of thing. Those stories, I believe. But Loch Ness Monster and Sasquatch, I'm a little bit more skeptical. I had to update the stream over on Odyssey because it was live streaming as Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> That's hilarious. Gameplay. Yeah. Well, unless you're um, planning on telling me the tragic tale of Darth Plagueis the Wise, <laughs> then we're okay. I think we're doing yeah. fun. So, yeah, I know we ranted about UFOs for most of the night, and that was because I wanted to get the um, I wanted to get the lighthearted conspiracy theories out of the way yes. first. I didn't want to see it canceled if I talked oh, yeah. about their taboo. Susan topics. of uh, YouTube would be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But uh, we could end the YouTube uh, stream, and... Um... It will continue going live over on Odyssey, and we'll talk the more controversial, you know, <laughs> That'd be subjects. nice. And I'll try to uh, limit it to, like, about 20 minutes to a half hour, because I'm sure that you got places that you want to be, things you need to do. I'm just trying to, you know, enjoy my weekend, so I have yes. time to, to give my thoughts on that. But now that we've talked about some of the more lighthearted conspiracies, I'd definitely yes. be down to talk about the more serious stuff. Because I've seen you do some uh, conspiracies with other people on the show, but I don't think that you've ever gone to quite as much depth as I'm willing to go with you oh, on no. some of these theories. Um, no, not so to for, for the YouTube stream, I'm going to end it. <laughs> Alrighty. Are we on Odyssey? Uh, it's so confusing. Uh, give me a sec.